They'll be calling you a radical. So this is important historical video. All my videos are. So the frontline piece that's out, it's a must watch. What it does is expose, you know, Tim Martin just called me, says I'm in tears after watching it. And this is a guy who knows. He says, Kevin, did you're the only one on earth that reported any of this. Did you see any of this that's being reported in Frontline for years on any media source? Arnie Gundersil? It, what it does, it exposes the fraud of the Gundersils. Him and his wife. It exposes the fraud of Busby. Froze the fraud of Keldica, all of the so-called Greenpeace, Sierra Club. Even though it's half-truths, they don't talk about the USS Reagan. As I said, I want to ask any of you that stayed with me the whole time, which the bro ultimate broken record, Kevin Blanche, he's been right the whole fucking time. Now you can understand my intensity. How fucking pissed because I've known. Ten fucking years? How many times have I said, clear back then, ten years ago, they're going to tell you exactly what I'm fucking telling you right now, Years from now, after the frogs have been boiled nicely. Well, they just did on front line. You see any of that? The one line in there, they had this asshole on there. Oh, we flew over there after a few days. Was that reported? <laughs> By the way, there was plenty of U.S. In fact, RT, the very first, I don't think you can find it anymore. Could have called into RT from inside the reactor was a kid from Idaho, Arco, Idaho, worked for Idaho National. He was, what, you're inside Fukushima? Yeah, this was like day one or two. <laughs> Kevin Blanche is right. I want you to think about this. Think about this. The Prime Minister of Japan walked up to Kevin Blanche and told me thank you and bowed to me. The Sudoku folding a thousand paper cranes, very own niece, at the Enola Gay ceremony, walked up to me and told me thank you, bowed to me, and gave me a recycled paper crane fan. All emotional. She started to cry. Go ask Rachel Godoya. First time I met Rachel Godoya, she caught me and cried. Go ask Kathy Alwani. Go ask Gyoko. I mean, when I first met them, they all, I mean, they knew my path. I mean, they're like, Kevin, you were the only information we were getting in Japan. The only information. So, now stay with me. This is historic important stuff. So, I reported this as six full blown out meltdowns immediately. I plotted the spent fuel pools were fucking completely gonzo. So, the they have the pilot. You know, they put the edge shields on, just like Chernobyl, blah, blah. The one line that comes across to me in the front line, they didn't say the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl, like every PR bullshit line firm has said. They said the worst nuclear disaster in a century. In a century? So there was nuclear disasters over a century ago? I don't think so. Worst nuclear accident in history is what should have been said. So the pilot, he's dumping water. And this is telling. This is the one shot from it. This is only an hour piece. It's, I mean, it'll teach you a lot. Not me. It won't teach, I mean, teach me. I mean, it'll be played in schools of journalism around the world as black and yellow fucking journalism, which I'm the guy that termed the term black and yellow journalism. So when he drops the first thing, and, you know, I remember I'm going crazy when they were doing that. Fuck, what a joke. He says, we could see that it worked the first water that we dropped. Landed because we could see the steam. And then they show a shot. And you can see the steam come off it. So what does that tell me? It tells me how fucking hot those fucking pools were. So, this fucking asshole that's on there and says, Oh, we flew over and... You know, the numbers didn't go down. Of course they didn't go down. I have the FOIA documents. I've had them from the beginning. Well, before there was any FOIA document. I have the transcript inside the situation room. So, what 
the Frontline documentary will try to tell you is, you know, the Tokyo Fire Department goes in and hooks hoses up on day 8. So that's the 19th. That's 10 years ago today. I'm already reporting going crazy. These are fucking meltdowns. They're lying. I'm going fucking psycho. I, I... So what the front line is trying to fucking shove down this elephant down your throat that you can give spent fuel pools and the spent fuel pools over there, oh, the amount of them, the Mox Fuel and 3, which we made Mox Fuel illegal here in 1977. So what they do? They shipped it to Japan. You know, it's all weapons testing that was going on here in 3. That somehow you're going to believe that you can dump water onto spent fuel pools and they can survive for eight fucking days without water. They can't survive eight fucking minutes without fucking water. And when he dropped... Now, stay with me. This is an important story. You can get a screen capture, you people. When they show the footage and it drops, and you see that poof of steam. Well, that tells me how fucking hot. Because you drop water and it immediately poofs a cloud of steam like that. It's got to be thousands of degrees. So that tells me completely fucking Zerk fired out of control. I have footage. I'll find it and put it up when it blew up. I caught that on the live cam. When it exploded dramatically again. In June of 2011. I mean, just the whole fucking dog and pony show. But none of this footage was shown till 10 years after the fact. I mean, this is the, I mean, the cover-up is beyond malice. It's beyond criminal. Everybody who participates should be locked up. People should be riding in the fucking streets. People should have pitchforks. What they've done? Killed, just wiped out the Pacific Ocean. So when they finally did get water and pump on it, fucking... Just dumping on what those spent fuel pools are. You don't think they're cracked, blown to smithereens? What fucking fuels on the water just runs on them and into the ocean? Radioactive, radio, which now new isotope fucton. I want you to watch it. I want you to watch it. And, you know, the half truths. Not one fucking word about the USS radio. So inside the situation room, within hours, John Holden's let this out so I could talk about it because it's classified. You know, I reported a lot of this fucking before, you know, I could have gotten a lot of trouble for some of the stuff I did, but I've been very careful. I'm not willing to go to fucking prison, you know, martyr myself for a bunch of fainting goats who don't give a fuck. I will go back to Barrett Brown when he got out of prison. I always think of that fucking interview he did. Well, you were such an incredible actress. You did so much work. Even inside prison, you changed everything. You were so good. Why nothing now? He says, well, I realized that I showed you all the proof right in your fucking face. And the American public still didn't give a fuck. So why am I fighting for him? Why? By the way, who said I was ever fighting for him? It's fighting for my grandchildren. I'm fighting for the animals and the ecology of the earth. I like the animals. You know, I like the whales. I like the beauty of nature. I love the ecology. And to watch it fucking be destroyed like this has broke my heart. Beyond, This is the greatest crime in fucking human... And then they're going to come out and say, Ha, 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 hi, I'm the fucking Ted Bundy of the nuclear industry. Ha, 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 watch, watch. Here, here's the footage of me fucking raping and killing and maiming. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, okay. Keep doing it. And nothing, nothing, no recourse, no accountability. Fuck, unbelievable. Fuck, unbelievable. Ten fucking years of this. Kevin Blanche has been dead on. Think about it. Full of cancer, cut off Medicaid, spit on, guns in my face, treated like fucking shit, wiped out financially. The Prime Minister of the country of Japan walks up to me. I asked him to his face. Well, you're so anti-nuclear now, and you're so emotional about this now. You're the one that built it up, the nuclear industry. The United States made me do it. At the Enola Gay Hangar, while full, for given two months to live on 11-11, in a bone marrow trap. What a fucking story. What a fucking story. Fuck me. Seventh generation Utah, the Enola Gay flies out of Utah, 
for the folded paper crane is presented at the old AA hangar to leukemia victim. Don't you think that's a big fucking story? So they're saying 10 years ago today that they were able to, the fire department got in there, hooked hoses up, and fucking dumped it. And another line that really burns my ass, and everybody's going to go along with this. And TEPCO, even in the in this document, they prove what liars TEPCO is. I mean, the prime minister, Nato Khan, says they lied to us the whole time. They lied to everybody. And do not kid yourself, the United States Department of Energy runs TEPCO. They're running that show. I know, because I, inside the situation, Barack Obama was green as a dumb fucker that he was. Holden took over. Fucking, they're all beamed in there. You know, the make it so, not a word about the USS Reagan. The fucking mass murder. Not a word. It's Reagan on this documentary should say, the Reagan was called in, was pumping fucking water on it. They, they skip right over that. That was on day one. Day one. You know, the media drops the fucking ball. The marine biologists drop the ball. The scientists just fucking, huh. And the American public stands back and watches these fucking madmen fucking gang rape this fucking earth. The jet stream just, I mean, what they've done to this fucking North America. Gina McCarthy's now the climate czar who crashed Radnet. What a criminal. Everybody gone along. Lisa Jackson, Scotty Pruitt, fucking, oh. Every single senator wide and wet. The report of the car worse than I thought. Hillary Clinton's emails. I leaked so many of those out. Fucking take a shower. I mean, Fukushima, Fukushima. Got to talk to Kissinger. Fuck. Oh. Trump meets with a B first thing. Cover up a Fukushima. Cover up a Fukushima. Just goes on. Biden's fucking new. What is it? Blinken? Huh. Whatever. He's first trip to Japan. Keep the fucking lie going. So front line, so 10 fucking years today, he's saying they finally got hoses and sprayed fucking water, getting water onto the spent fuel pools. So you're trying to tell me that a spent fuel pool can go eight fucking days. Eight days dry. <laughs> they can't go eight minutes. We're as bad as, I mean, it's like 100 meltdowns. The Zerk fires, I have the FOIA documents that show the Zerk fires, fucking. And the thing is, so many people inside the Department of Energy, so many people in the CIA, the NSA, Snowden, and that whole cover-up, the bunker in Hawaii was, the whole thing when he flips the chip and gets over, hands it to, I mean, it's all the cover-up of Fukushima. It's the greatest event in human fucking history, bar none. The greatest event is the cover-up of Fukushima. Second greatest event is the said fucking event that created the cover-up of Fukushima. Frontline's piece just exposes Keldeka. I mean, that fuckhead Busby attacked me, threatened me when I was a bone marrow transplant center. Oh, he goes on the Pacific Ocean is a big place of glue. Paid by the nuclear industry. Arnie Gunnershield's wife is the PR fucking spokesperson for the nuclear Oh, it's a, he's in my YouTube site day fucking one. It's just a hydrogen blast. Oh, I told that motherfucker off. And then you wonder why I'm so intense and I'm so, I, you think about this burden I've had to carry on my shoulders for 10 fucking years. Somebody said to me, well, anybody who had five cents fuck knew them. Then why the fuck, if you knew them, why the fuck didn't you do anything about this? I, that's what I want to ask. Oh, anybody, everybody knew, oh, really? Oh, really? Fucking, <laughs> fucking 10 years of this. You know, Tim called me and says, well, I really never got involved with you until three years after the fact. Nobody did. Nobody did. I mean, Durnford, he's done great, but fuck, he was two, three years after the fact, you know, and I love his work. He's dedicated. He's passionate, but come on. I've been on a fucking day one. I've had to carry this fucking burden. I've known exactly. They jump over no USS Reagan. The Reagan was sent in that fucking day, right up next to it, spraying it, make it so. They made the decision to just push into the ocean and fucking poison the ocean. The storms rise up. Fuktonium. At least they did say. They didn't say the same narrative that's written by the PR firm over and over and over. Everybody regurgitates. How about all these professors? Uh, you know, Geraldine Thomas, fucking uh, Kathleen. What is it? 
Higley, Orange State, Jay Collin. How about Ken Buckafuck Buesler? Oh, he knew. I mean, boy, this is exposed what liar frauds they all were, huh? How about fucking Dutch Sands? Fucking calling it a fucking fake after he was a... How about all these fucking YouTubers and vloggers that took it on then that said it was a hoax? I mean, and my YouTube seat crashes and there goes to the moon. You think that's all coincidence? Yeah, just like the dead tide pools. How about my cancer on 11, 11, 11? How about my open heart surgery? How about Mike Lee kicking me off Medicaid? How about all this historic work? The only person in the fucking world who's asked a politician to their face about Fukushima, including fucking Trump. Kevin Lynch. What do I get for it? Oh. Oh. When a doctor looks you right in the fucking eyes and tells you in the prime of your fucking life, get your affairs in order, you'll be dead within two months. That was in the fall of 2011. Oh, it's killed no one. So I posted the link and I says, here's Musso. His mother. So I used to get thousands of emails out of Japan, Japan today and then one day, just nothing. I used to talk to Barber Boxer's office. I used to talk to Wyden personally. Fucking all of these politicians. And nothing. I've been told that I'm classified. I want you to think about that. I've been able to do this. I don't know. I got fucking strong shoulders. I remember when I was 16 years, excuse me, I remember when I was 12 years old, walk with junior high in fucking science class and they had a contest and I had a really good science teacher through the whole school. I was only in seventh grade. You had to hold your arms out as long as you could. I won. She's, I've never seen anything like that. She's, I've been doing this for years. I've never seen anybody do this long. Eh. I guess it was my place. Talk about have to have fucking strength and a con. The old times used to call it your constitution. Well, it's tested mine to the brink, hasn't it? <sighs> I've carried this fucking burden, knowing all these fucking truths, knowing this has wiped out the Pacific Ocean, knowing this caused the fires, knowing it's caused the drought of the right, most likely fucking caused fucking COVID. But you know the facts of the matter. You're gonna chalk it up to coincidence. I mean. When I can sit here and prove to you the typos are dead, everybody laughed at me. Prove, oh, they're going to salmon will collapse on cue. All this that I've said comes true. And I've had to carry this burden and then nothing still. I never, one thing I would have never believed. I, I had all this dead on for years. The one thing I didn't have dead on is once the frogs were told, they didn't give a fuck. I'm willing to lay down and die. Of course, when I was in the bone marrow transplant fighting for my life for cancer, I learned that the hard way. I thought everybody fought. I watched my dad fight and fight and fight and die of cancer after being nuked in the Nevada test saying He was drafted. I watched Annika fight so fucking hard. Watched him die. I thought everybody fought like that. I really was fucking most don't. Even young, healthy fucking, well, they're not healthy, they got cancer, but I learned they just lay down and fucking die. When you have a populace and you have a people that's constitution at a personal level is so fucking weak that they're not willing to fight for their own fucking life. They're not w willing to get redemption. They're not willing to fight back against fucking their own killers. They're not willing to fucking stand up and fight against fucking the greatest criminals in human history. No retaliation. No accountability. No responsibility when you have a population like that. Wow. How pathetic is the American populace's constitution? They don't have one. I'm talking about the individual. I would have never believed that people would not fucking have enough fucking grit, enough fucking stamina, enough fucking constitution to fight back and live. Fight back and live. To fight for the animals, the Akai. I would have never believed it. Believe it. You watch this and then you tell me. Not a word about the USS Reagan. Well, Saw died in 2013, and you're going to go with it. The TEPCO chocks it up and says, Oh, TEPCO made a statement when he died. Well, it was unrelated. Oh, really? He died in 2015 of cancer, July 9th. 
2013 of cancer, and you, uh, you're going to believe Tipco. Well, even Frontline says they won't even think. Even the Prime Minister of Japan says they fucking even lied to him. Okay. How many of them are dead? Well, the, you don't believe the Pope? The Pope went over there and made a statement. The Cath, or excuse me, the Christian Coalition in Japan says there are thousands of workers' urns. <laughs> you're going to go along. How about all the fake fucking media? How about Anderson, Vanderbilt, Cooper, Sanjay Gutu, who were over there and then came home and no accountability to any of these fuckers? No accountability to the fuck fake footage that ABC did? The fake sh I mean, you watch this. It's fucking heartbreaking. Think about the burden I've carried for 10 fucking years, knowing all this. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the historic fucking work. Way past heart, and I know heartbreak. I know heartbreak. I watched both the loves of my life fucking die of cancer. You know, I watched them held their hands in the body bag. I watched all my money go. When I went to the bone marrow transplant, and I was uninsured. 30,000 shares of Tesla stock. Watched people pull guns at me. Watched people spit at me. The fucking slander on the internet towards me. Videos made about me. Fucking used to take me fucking hours... Why I'm full of fucking cancer just to police the trolls. It wasn't like it is now on YouTube. It was vicious. They were vicious. Guns in my face twice. Walking the coast of California fucking dying, sleeping with fucking no food, no fuck. I mean. I guess I kind of can feel like fucking somewhat what Jesus did, huh? Put me on a fucking cross. I want to know, why didn't anybody fucking fight back? Why? Why did 7 billion people just stand back and let them fucking do this and not retaliate? When I told you, well, I want to ask you, you just didn't believe me? Is that what it was? You just didn't believe me? I fought back. I'm still fighting back. I want to know why no one fought back. No accountability. No nothing. Organized the Million Mass March. Seven million people. I had everybody awake. Nobody did anything. I did. Hmm. I guess I have a fucking strong constitution still. Hmm. I don't know. Stand doing it.